Hey guys, how's it going? It's Jay from Sony Alpha Lab, and what I got in this video is the Sony FE 20mm f1.8 G lens. Now this is a wide-angle prime lens from Sony, and it goes for about $900 US. It's extremely high quality. Now I also did a comparison review with the 24mm GM lens, so if you're interested in that, be sure to check that out. I will have that linked below. But for now, let's get a closer look at the 20mm, shall we? So you can see in my hands here, it's a quite compact lens. It only weighs in at about 13 ounces or 375 grams, which is, you know, really lightweight considering it's a full-frame wide-angle lens. It actually has quite a bit of glass in there. There's 14 elements in 12 groups. It also has dual XD linear autofocus motors in there, so the focus is super fast and very quiet as well, which is great for video and, you know, sports photography, high-speed sports and things like that. has a 67 millimeter filter thread on the front. It also has a pinch style lens cap and it also has fluorine coating on the front element there, so water will bead up nicely. It has this pedal design lens hood and you can also put that on the other way, of course, like so for storing. And it also comes with this lens pouch here which is a nice feature. So you can stow it in the lens pouch if you want, to try to help keep dust off of it and things like that. Looking at it on the back side, it's a nice metal. And you can see here, it actually has a rubber weather sealing gasket on the back, which is really good for weather sealing. It'll help keep water out of there from getting in. It actually also has a customizable focus hold button right here. So you can program that to, for a variety of functions. It has a AF MF switch here for autofocus, manual focus. So you can easily turn it into manual focus if you want. It also has a linear manual focus design and the focus ring feels very, very buttery. I, I really like the smoothness and consistency of this. And it's also very easy to use in manual focus. I did do quite a bit of manual focus testing. I was very happy with the way it performed in that regard. Now on the other side, you have the click and declick feature for the aperture. So it has a manual aperture ring here. You can actually turn that manually. I usually leave it on auto though because sometimes this will accidentally turn and uh, I don't really like that. But it is a nice feature if you're somebody that likes to do it manually. And then if you declick it like so, this will now turn nice and smooth as you can see there. So if you're using this on a crop factor body, its effective range is 30 millimeter as opposed to 20 millimeter on the full frame. And of course it's f1.8 to f22. The minimum focus distance on this lens is seven inches approximately or 18 centimeters. So you can get really close to your subject which renders the background extremely out of focus and the bouquet rendering is really good as you will see in the sample photos in a minute. Now this lens also features the nano AR coating for, you know, really crisp contrast. So I tested this lens on the Sony a7 III and it performed excellent. And I'm going to go over the sample photos next so you can see how this lens performs in the lab and also in the real world. So let's get on with this review and head over into Lightroom. So what we're looking at here is a minimum focus distance test. And on the top left here, you can see the EXIF data. So I was at f1.8. I was using a tripod, self timer, and I was shooting in raw quality. And there has been no lens correction applied in Lightroom. This is straight off the camera raw. And again, here's f1.8 and look at that sharpness. Look at the killer background separation. You can see the lights in the background on the room and the dollar bill. And then basically this is just an aperture run. So now I'm stopping down f2.8, f4, f5.6, f8. Now I just wanted to zoom in here to f5.6 and let you see these bouquet balls. So at f4 here you can see they're still looking really round. At f5.6 they do start to octagon just a little bit and that is due to the nine blade aperture diaphragm. If it had more blades they would not octagon as much as they are. And here I'm at f8, and then here's f11, and then f16. And you can see the sharpness is just excellent across the board. I actually did have it on auto ISO for this test, so the ISO went up. That was an accident on my part. Not that big of a deal, though. So here's just a bigger, wider angle view of the lab here, 
just so you can see what you're looking at at f1.8 and 20 millimeter and you could see you get quite a bit of detail in there now I just wanted to show you what it looks like when I enable the lens profile correction and you can see it corrects a little bit of the distortion there's very little distortion though to be honest with you but you can also see in the corners the vignette the darkening effect in the corners that just happens with fast aperture lenses and it's pretty well controlled though overall and you can see the lens profile does do a pretty good job fixing it let me zoom in so you can see the detail a little closer and you can see the sharpness is fantastic across the board I can actually go to two to one here and show you even closer but it does degrade the quality a little bit when you go to two to one but you can see the sharpness is really good and if you if I stop it down to f2.8 it does sharpen up a little bit in the corners but again overall sharpness is excellent on this lens in my opinion especially in the real world so let me just keep stopping it down so now we're at f4 and f5.6 f8 f11 and f16 and if I zoom in here at f16 you can see the sharpness is still excellent across the board a little bit of diffraction is going to come into play here but I'm not really noticing much of a degrade and sharpness at you know in this scene it does lose a little bit but not too much f5.6 i would say this is the sharpest and f8 also looks extremely sharp it does soften up a little bit at f11 and f16 but not really much color and clarity is excellent on this lens though i would say all right so here i was just doing a quick autofocus test in the lab and I was using the touch screen and just touching around various locations to show you how good the focus works and how smooth it is and stuff. Works great. Love the touch screen. All right, guys, so I just wanted to go over some real world photos here. And full disclosure, these are raw files. And you can see the EXIF data up here on the top left. I was using the Sony a7 III, which is a 24 megapixel full frame mirrorless camera of course and in addition to that I did do some editing in Lightroom here so I can show you a before and after by hitting the backslash key and you can see what the original raw file looked like and then how I enhanced it a little bit so just so you know that is the deal so let's go through some of these photos here so you can get a better look now this is just a stupid antenna on the top of my car but what I wanted to show you was the bokeh ball rendering and just that awesome background separation you can get. And here's just Jace's pedal car steering wheel. Here's one of Layla. Now I wanted to show you this image because I focused on the helmet and just look how blurry her face is. That's what kind of killer separation you can get with a full frame camera and an f1.8 aperture even at 20 millimeters. So I'm pretty close to the subject here and you can see Jace is completely out of focus. And that's just very impressive. Now here's another shot I wanted to show you, and I'm going to zoom in here. Now look at this eye on the left here is perfectly tack sharp, and then the eye on the right, which is literally only an inch or two maybe further away from the camera, is out of focus. And that's that depth of field that you can get with the full frame camera and a fast aperture wide angle lens like this. Here's just one of Jace. And again, here's a raw file. This is just what it looks like straight off the camera and this is the edited version now what I did here I have a preset again let me just show you here up here I have a punch and fill preset and that's what I used basically to edit all these and what the punch and fill did was it enabled the lens profile correction it added a little bit of vignette here and it also added a little bit of sharpening in addition I added a medium contrast tone curve and then under basic I, I filled in the shadow a little bit added some vibrance and a little bit of clarity and that's pretty much it that's what the preset does and then on a per photo basis I would go in here and dial these settings in so if you guys want I can share this preset with you maybe I'll do another video on that but in the meantime I just wanted to show you what I actually did quick so you know because the files don't look like this straight off the camera and there Jace was just playing with the ball Here's one of Layla, and let me show you a before image so you can see the face was obviously really dark due to the lighting and the shade caused by the helmet, but some Lightroom love, and boom, there you go. Pretty easy. Now check out this cool water tower shot with the sun. I wanted to show you the sun flare um, star effect and also 
the lens flaring that happens. And you can see, I think it looks pretty darn awesome on this lens. And again, here is a straight off the camera raw file, and here is my edited file. Now, here is one of the kids. I just focused on this plant here, this weed in the foreground, and you can just see that killer sharpness and background separation is phenomenal. And here is the original file, and here's just a slightly edited one. And we were going for a walk here, and this was just an old basketball court. And again, the detail, color, clarity is just excellent on this lens. Just look at that sharpness across the board. And here is the original RAW file, and here is my enhanced file. Now, here is just a cool fence shot I just want to show. I always try to show what it looks like shooting through a fence. I was like a foot or two away from the fence and focused in the background. And then here is pretty much the same shot, this time focused on the fence. And look at that separation you can get. Really impressive, in my opinion. And then here is just as close as I could get to the fence shooting through, just so you can see what that looks like. Here's just a wide angle, a fun wide angle shot of Jace on the slide. And here's one of Layla. I just wanted to show a cool sun flare shot, and I thought it looked pretty cool. Here's one of Jace, and let me just show you what this looks like before and after. That's the original file, and there's my enhancement. So you can see how much that did. Then here's just another one. Layla was holding a little pine cone there. And you can see the sharpness is awesome. Just look at the detail on her hand and everything. Again, this is at f1.8. And the clarity, color, sharpness on this lens is just fantastic. And here's one. I just focused on this tree branch here that was cut off. And I thought it looked pretty cool, you know, the way it had all those cracks in it. And you could see the kids in the background there. There's just another one depth of field separation example. And here is a before. This is straight off the camera. And here is just a slightly enhanced. And then here is just a, you know, a little shelter area at the park that you can see there. And uh, here's a before straight off the camera and a slightly enhanced version. Now this one, I just wanted to show you what it looks like as far as the distortion goes on the face. And you can see right here, there's really not much distortion on Jace's face. But on this image, you can clearly see the distortion when he's closer to the edge of the frame. That stretching effect is what comes into play. And that's just the nature of a wide angle lens. Basically, the center area, you're not going to get much, much distortion at all. But once you move to the edges, you're going to get this like stretching, ballooning effect. And I just want to illustrate that there. So you can't really take good portraits with somebody in the corner of the frame. You really need them you know, in the center area for the best quality. And you can see this one here, there's a little bit of distortion, but not too much. But if his head was over here, it would really start to distort. Now here's just a depth of field play type shot. You could see Jace on the seesaw we were playing on, and I focused on the on my side. And then this one, I focused on Jace. So you can see just that depth of field play, nothing crazy. Here's one of Layla on the elephant <laughs> ride at the park. And here's one of Layla on the uh, cool roundabout turnstile thing, whatever you call that, I can't remember. All right, so this is an actual HDR file. So I combined three images using HDR Effects Pro, and then I enhanced it here in Lightroom. So here's just what the HDR looked like straight out of the HDR software. And then after I enhanced it in Lightroom, it turned into that. Now here's just one of my camera bag, and I can show you a before and after. Here's just another landscape style shot. And here is straight off the camera, raw file. See, it's pretty flat. See a little bit of distortion there. And here is the corrected, you know, enhanced raw file. And here's just another one looking through some trees. I wanted to show you the depth of field play. I was at f2.5 for this shot. And you can see that depth of field is really awesome. It gives a nice, you know, depth to the image, in my opinion. And here's an unedited version and an edited version. And here's just another file here. I went pretty far with the edit on that one. Here's what the file looked like straight off the camera. And here's an edited version. Here's a portrait of Jace. And again, I just played around in Lightroom and edited this a bit. So here's what the file looked like straight off the camera. And here is an enhanced version. And this is just my camera bag. I thought it looked pretty cool. So here is straight off the camera. And here is an enhanced version. Here's one of Layla holding a pine cone. And again, that depth of field play is quite good. And the wide angle effect that you get with a 
portrait like this. Um, you know, you get a lot of background information, which is quite cool. This is just an awesome Lego car me and Jace were working on. We finally finished it. Didn't take too long, honestly, but I wanted Jace to do most of the work, you know what I'm saying? So I just helped him. Now here's just an architecture type shot. I want to show you a before and an after. If you scroll down here in Lightroom, there is an option for transform and I just clicked auto here. So if I turn that off, you can see the image has that distortion, you know, the because I'm lower than the building, so the verticals aren't vertical. And you always want the verticals to be vertical in architecture photography in particular, as best you can, you know, within reason. And that's what I did there. I just clicked auto on the transform to fix the verticals. And you can see this lens did an excellent job in my opinion. And the sharpness is fantastic across the board. I was shooting at f5.6 for this particular frame. And again, this one was at f5.6 as well. And I used this same transform tool. I just clicked auto. And if I turn, if you turn it off, you can see how it was, you know, just that distortion because I was looking up a little bit. And then that corrected the verticals by hitting auto. And it did a really good job. This is at f5.6. And let me show you a before. So this is an unedited straight off the camera. And then I just slightly enhanced it here in Lightroom. And again, look at the sharpness, clarity, and detail of this image. It's absolutely fantastic, in my opinion. Really, really good quality. Now, here's another one. I just wanted to show you this one. And I, again, if I do the auto correction here, you can see how it corrects the vertical. See that? So I'm just going to click auto. And you can actually do constrain crop if you want, and that'll bring it in to get rid of the the white there, or you can uncheck it and scale it back out. And you can just actually hit the crop tool here, change the aspect ratio to like four to five or something, and leave it like that if you wanted. But that's how you fix the verticals. And you can see this does an exceptionally good job. This is at F1.8, guys. So F1.8, you could see the detail in the corners is fantastic. Very, very good quality optics, in my opinion even wide open at f1.8. Now here's just a shot inside my house here and this is just straight off the camera pretty much. I did adjust the shadows and the highlights and then here's another one where I corrected for the distortion using that transform tool. So now you can see the verticals are vertical. So if you were going to use this for architecture photography or you know real estate photography indoors you can expect to get results like this. And again, up here in the corners, you can see there's no purple fringing or anything like that. The inlays extremely high contrast highlights. It's uh, very, very well controlled, in my opinion, and I was very impressed with the quality of this lens. So that is pretty much it for the real world photos. Let's go over some sample video really quick, and then we will wrap this up with the conclusion. What's the dreamer doing? <laughs> what is the dreamer doing? Can I get water? Are you thirsty? Nice? Yeah, I'm thirsty. Okay. I'm thirsty. You got dehydrated? You've been riding only 30 seconds. No, I've been <laughs> thirsty all morning. Oh, well, why didn't you get a drink? <laughs> you pounded that orange juice. I know. All right. I'll get off it. You gotta put some hustle behind that muscle, Layla. Can you move this back more? No, it's out. The, it's all the way back. <laughs> I'm gonna try. Alright, go for it.
All right, try again. Try to keep it in that spot. Pop. Mm -hmm. All right, do your cool spin move. Okay. All right, guys, so at the end of the day, I highly recommend the Sony 20mm f1.8 G lens. It's a really high quality optic. The performance and sharpness in particular is incredible all corner to corner. Uh, the distortion control is really good as well. So this lens is really a great option for wide angle photography. If you're looking for a faster aperture for lower light use and things like that, it'd be a good option for astrophotography as well. Um, interior photography, landscape photography, architecture photography, things like that. Um, as you saw in Lightroom, the little bit of distortion that there is can easily be corrected you know, in Lightroom using the profile corrections and things like that. Um, so it's just a solid performer all around. Even in the high contrast scenes when shooting into the sun, the flare control and everything like that is, is really good, in my opinion, based off, you know, years of reviewing lenses. I was extremely impressed with the sharpness uh, at f1.8 in particular, corner to corner in the real world. I was actually really impressed at how sharp it was. I didn't expect it to be that sharp. If you guys have any questions, be sure to ask below the video. I will be happy to try and help you out. If you enjoyed the video, I would really appreciate it if you gave me a thumbs up. And also, if you want to see videos in the future, be sure to subscribe and hit that notification bell as well. That's about it. Stay safe out there, and hopefully this coronavirus lockdown won't be much longer because it's pretty fair to say that a lot of us are starting to go a little crazy being inside all the time. All right, guys, so take care, have a good day, and I will catch up with you next time.